plus, of course, local favourite Jay Abbo joining us live here in studio. Little human touch to add to our artificial intelligence special. Ah, oh, very nice. Are we real? Are we not real? Are we? <laughs> you never really know. Uh, have, you, have you been using any artificial intelligence in your... I'm sure you have got it. Oh, yeah. I'm all about the chat GPT. Yeah, so I use a lot of I want to know what you use it for. I use it for writing, presentations, for admin work that I have no time for. Um, yeah, just to even goodbye emails. <laughs> yeah, I, I usually do a radio show, and I've actually been trying to see if it can write some content for me, and it's not the best at it, but I'm hoping <laughs> it gets better. Although, actually, no, I'm not hoping it gets better, because then we're both going to have a problem. So. And it is, and there's, there's, there's a reason why one of the most popular websites in the world at the moment is actually Will a robot steal my job? Com. You know, it gets millions and millions of hits on a regular basis. Uh, such is the prevalence of artificial intelligence. And of course, uh, all of us were very much aware last week uh, there was a really coming together the assembly of artificial intelligence here. So we're looking to take inspiration from that and sort of move the conversation forward, looking at it from a different, uh, number of different angles. Yeah, I'm excited. I think AI is one of my favourite topics, the nerd that I am, which is why you guys keep me around. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, it's, I mean, there's more reasons than that. But there's uh, the thing that was like, oh, it's going to steal the jobs, it's going to take the jobs, the industry's going to be ruined. I'm pretty sure they said that about the internet. Yeah. So, yeah. with the right regulation, I'm sure it's going to go fine. There's, 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 there's the whole thing about early adopters, isn't there? And, and, and finding that sort of common path, uh, the human element, the, 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 the tech element as well, and finding it for better. So, yeah, it'd be interesting to look at it, as I said, from a programmer's point of view, an educator's point of view, um, a, an ethical point, a, a legal point of view. point of view. Yeah, the legal side of things, I think, is, is, is key on this one. So, uh, looking forward to what promises to be a busy old show. Yep, absolutely. But for now, I actually hear we have got a serial techpreneur joining us in the studio. It's time to find out who our guest co-host is. Hi, my name is Raymond Masabah. I am a serial entrepreneur and I'm very excited to be here. Now, when it comes to AI, we have the fanatics who love it and then the skeptics who think that one day AI might take our jobs. So I went down to the Dubai Assembly for Generative AI to get a real feel of how it's being adopted right here in the region. Take a look at this. There's innovation, ideas, and even music in the air as we're here at the Dubai Assembly for Generative AI. And I'm gonna have the rare opportunity to talk to some experts about all the questions that are on our minds. The Dubai Future Foundation is always looking to the future, imagining how technologies could work. But can you give us ex uh, specific examples of how your foundation or the UAE government is using AI right now? Okay, so obviously, I mean, um, we, we saw the impact of AI and His Highness Sheikh Mohammed always uh, speaks about the Dubai Future Foundation as Dubai's lab, which means that we uh, are entitled to test new things. So for, in the, in, to your question in AI, the moment we saw the magnitude of, of AI, we launched so many programs, the Artificial Intelligence Center, for example, at AI, the accelerators under the center. And the idea of that is to welcome innovators, students, academia, from the private sector, to actually come together and show us what ideas are there and how we can help them excel. How can we help them partner with the government agency? Now, obviously, Your Excellency, with technologies like this that are brand new, disruptive, it can leave a lot of people afraid. People are scared of the effects of AI. In your elevated position, what would you say to them to sort of help them worry less? So today in the opening remarks, we showed the value, the value on the economy, the value on creativity, the value on... Humanity has always prevailed in the sense of adapting to advances of technology, whether it was different inventions like airplanes, elevators, autonomous cars. We have adapted all our lives to to the new innovations. And no doubt we will adapt to AI, but uh, we need to really come up this time uh, with a worldwide plan because of the speed of transformation of technology and the involvement of AI. What ways do you imagine that these technologies could help people in their day-to-day -day lives, not just interacting with the government? It's making individuals much more productive, much more fast in delivering what they are supposed to be, either I mean, and, and they're different personas of being just uh, a, a, an individual in the city or even a professional, or even a mom or a teacher or any, in any other occupation. We see it really uh, a great tool for us to be much more fast in adopting technologies and delivering on what we are supposed to do in life in general. 
And of course, uh, being very much aware about the much more advancement coming in the future, we always keep up uh, with the technologies and really shaping the future using those technologies to the benefit of the humans. And that is just a small taste of the amazing work happening across Dubai when it comes to the future and AI. And I can't wait to see what developments we're going to have at the next assembly. Yeah, great event. And after the assembly comes the action. In fact, today's guest co-host is an advocate for tech innovation and youth empowerment. Uh, a multipreneur, or a techpreneur, as you mentioned a little earlier on, creating platforms to enable change. Please welcome to the show our guest co-host, Reem Almasaba. Thank you so much indeed for being with us. Of course, thank you for having me. Very kind of you to, to be with us. And I'm, I think what you, you marry uh, to, together is, is two elements here that a lot of people will want to, to, to find out more about. You talk about entrepreneurial uh, spirit, if you like, and a lot of people will think of that as a very human thing. And yet, when you look at the youth of today and you look at their ability to, to enable, uh, to, to, to adapt to generative AI and AI as a whole, is AI enabling youth empowerment today and that entrepreneurial spirit? Thank you for the question. So first of all, we should be aware that uh, artificial intelligence is not here to replace anyone. It's here to augment the skills that people use on a daily basis yeah. and it's here to automate the repetitive tasks. So as an entrepreneur, uh, serial entrepreneur within the field of uh, technology and fintech, I have been using uh, AI technologies way before the widespread of ChatGPT. Mm. And it has helped me increase my efficiency, increase my productivity and also automate a lot of daily tasks and focus on the creativity aspect. And I just want to also add that there, very, there is a very interesting study that has been launched in which AI can create entrepreneurs. With that sense, there is like some case studies where multi-language models have been utilized to understand campaigns that entrepreneurs run. So they use the metadata from text, from videos, from uh, expressions, and then it gives you a prediction if that campaign will be successful for a certain entrepreneur to uh, raise a certain round. And mm. that's very exciting for me. Mm. It's exciting times, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Reem, you touched on a very important word, which was creativity, mm -hmm. and that's the difference essentially between us and, and, and AI. You know, we have empathy, we're strategic, we can, we have um, creativity. So, talking about the youth, and specifically the youth in the UAE, mm. how do you think AI is going to help them harness more of their creativity? Interestingly, that uh, regardless of the rise of the uh, technological skills, soft skills, or how I would like to call it, people skill is very as much as essential. So we need to start from the core foundation of education, raising awareness of how AI can be implemented to upskill the students or even the educators when it comes to understanding the fundamentals before jumping to various solutions. So we need to focus on those, uh, you know, the basic skills that people should be aware of in terms of emotional intelligence, negotiation skills, strategic decision making, all of these stuff cannot be replaced by AI. But AI can help you with, you know, uh, increasing the productivity and just streamlining your pipeline on a daily basis. So what I've seen the trends currently is that students are being very much reliant on uh, AI, but at the same time, there is not much focus when it comes to soft skills and advocating for the essential skills that they need to build. Because in the future, it's, it's not AI who's going to replace you, but the person who's using AI will do. <laughs> I mean, it seems like in this current day and using AI, inclusion is more important than ever. And I know you've in, you're involved with women in AI. Can you tell me, are you seeing more of a trend these days of more women being in the tech field, especially in AI? Um, certainly. So the thing that we advocate at Women in AI Community, which is basically a community-run initiative, a non-profit initiative that is across 140 countries. And just this year, we launched a chapter in the UAE. So that's a great milestone for us. And uh, we live in a very biased world. And when it comes to AI and data privacy and regulations, it's very essential that we have a very diverse uh, community of not just women, but also uh, other demographic people. And that's one of the reasons why we started Women in AI. So we can showcase the amazing work that women do in this field in terms of research, in terms of education, and in terms also of raising awareness. And are you seeing more women get into tech in the time that you've been working? Yes, especially in the UAE. So I graduated from UAE University and almost 80% of the graduates are females when it comes to technology and engineering. So that's a huge thing. Incredible. Yeah. Reem, we saw so many of the great and good come to the uh, Dubai Assembly for Generative AI last week. And again, that's why we've prompted this conversation here today mm -hmm. on DXP today. 
Um, I had the privilege to go down there and be part of it. Great optimism down there, some great speakers, a lot of people attending. Um, there was this idea of Dubai establishing itself as a hub yeah. for generative AI for, or for artificial intelligence in general and, and exploring the different opportunities that artificial intelligence... Is, th is that something for the future or is Dubai already a hub for artificial intelligence? Dubai is an economical hub for everything, not just <laughs> specifically artificial intelligence. This is a very important point that we should uh, address. Uh, the interestingly is that we live in such a beautiful city where you know it, it encompasses different demographics, nationalities, and so on. So we need to create a hub where everyone can feel wanted and everyone can have an opportunity to be part of any sector, any domain. Mm. The reason why artificial intelligence is on the rise right nowadays is just because of OpenAI, ChatGPT and the advancements that we see. But in my opinion, it's just the beginning. We're going to see a lot of advancements in the next five years. So we have seen a lot of advancement, advancements when it comes to, for, for instance, last year, it was the focus was about Web3, yeah. NFTs and so on. But we did not forget about these. AI is here to leverage what Web3 has provided so we can take it to the next step. So Dubai will be the hub of anything technological. Yeah. Well, Reem, we're going to come back with some more awesome guests on this AI party, because an AI party don't stop. But coming up on the show, we're going to be looking at jobs in AI, the different things we could be doing and the new jobs that we could be seeing. You definitely don't want to miss this because it could be your next career. That is right. And shortly after the break, our favorite, Jay Abbo, will be performing live in the studio. Don't go anywhere.